Welcome to Clinical Minute, Female Sexual Health, Pharmacist's Role in Supporting Women with Hypoactive Sexual Desire Disorder. Sandra is a 32-year-old mother of two young children. She has been taking a Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, or SSRI, for six months to treat postpartum depression. When picking up a refill at the local pharmacy, she indicates a desire to speak with the pharmacist. At the counter, she says she has a question about side effects. You tell her you are happy to help. In a soft voice, she asks, Could this pill be affecting my interest in sex? I didn't feel this way after my first child was born. How do you proceed? According to the World Health Organization, sexual health is a state of physical, emotional, mental, and social well-being in relation to sexuality. It is not merely the absence of disease, dysfunction, or infirmity. Sexual health requires a positive and respectful approach to sexuality and sexual relationships, as well as the possibility of having pleasurable and safe sexual experiences, free of coercion, discrimination, and violence. For sexual health to be attained and maintained, the sexual rights of all persons must be respected, protected, and fulfilled. In 2016, the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health agreed on nomenclature for female sexual dysfunctions. This clinical minute will focus on one type of female sexual dysfunction, hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD. HSDD may be primary or secondary to another condition, lifelong or acquired, and generalized or situational. Criteria for diagnosis require the presence of either lack of motivation for sexual activity or loss of desire to initiate or participate in sexual activity, along with clinically significant personal distress. This distress can take the form of frustration, grief, a sense of incompetence, loss, sadness, sorrow, or worry. The symptoms must represent a change from the previous state that has persisted for at least three months. In addition to psychological and interpersonal issues, medical conditions and medications can contribute to HSDD. Medical conditions include endocrine disorders, such as diabetes and thyroid conditions, neurological disorders, cardiovascular disease, and psychiatric conditions such as depression. Many medications cause sexual side effects that can contribute to HSDD. This slide lists some of these medications. Because a variety of general health and psychosocial factors can impact sexual function, a thorough sexual history must cover a lot of ground and must include both medical and psychosocial issues. Questions about medical issues should explore the items listed on the left. Questions about psychosocial issues should explore the items listed on the right. The PLICIT model can be a helpful tool for discussing sexual health or concerns with patients and for planning next steps for screening and management. The model consists of four components. One, permission. Ask open-ended questions during the routine history to give the patient permission to talk about her sexual concerns and reassure her that her feelings are normal and acceptable. You could say, Many women with menopause have sexual concerns. Do you? Then use follow-up questions such as, What do you mean by that? Or, Tell me more. 2. Provide limited information. Provide education about female pelvic anatomy, the sexual response cycle, and the neurobiologic etiology of sexual problems. Discuss changes in sexual function throughout the life cycle. Explain that sexual interest or desire may not be the first stage in response. And explain that women may not experience orgasm 100% of the time. There are many topics to cover here. Address the most important ones in the time available, but don't feel pressured to cover all in one visit. Ask the patient to make a follow-up appointment to focus on sexual health concerns. 3. Specific Suggestions Offer specific suggestions and solutions to treat the problem. 
For example, suggest the use of lubricant, over-the-counter moisturizers, or topical estrogen for dryness or dyspareunia. Suggest that she plan date nights and make sexual behavior a priority. Suggest that she improve her diet, exercise routine, and sleep patterns to help overall mood. 4. Intensive Therapy Consider referring the patient for intensive therapy to qualified sexuality specialists. Here's a suggested general approach to treating sexual concerns. Use the PLICIT model for history taking and for first steps in management. Facilitate patient and partner education. Identify and treat medical conditions that may contribute. Consider medication and substance use, both current and past, as playing a possible causative role and resolve appropriately. Recommend therapies as appropriate and provide or refer for sexual counseling, coaching, and intensive sex therapy when indicated. When a sexual concern exceeds a clinician or pharmacist's level of comfort or expertise or warrants intensive therapy, a referral to a qualified specialist is recommended. This schematic indicates the hypothetical mechanisms of action of treatments for HSDD. These treatments appear to either change functional effects or alter neurotransmitter action in the brain. There are currently no testosterone products approved in the United States for treating sexual problems in women. The testosterone patch is approved in Europe for treating low sexual desire associated with distress in surgically menopausal women who are also on estrogen therapy. Studies have shown that testosterone delivered by skin patch increases sexual desire and the frequency of satisfying sex among carefully selected postmenopausal women with low desire that causes them distress. Common side effects include acne and increased facial and body hair. Dehydroepiandrosterone, or DHEA, is a natural hormone and is available as a non-prescription supplement in the United States. DHEA is an inactive precursor to androgens. Prosterone, which is a DHEA vaginal insert, was approved by the FDA in 2016 under the trade name Intrarosa to treat women experiencing moderate to severe pain during sexual intercourse due to menopause. Its efficacy was evaluated in two 12-week placebo-controlled clinical trials that included 406 healthy postmenopausal women 40 to 80 years of age with moderate to severe pain during sexual intercourse. Prosterone, when compared to placebo, was shown to reduce the severity of pain experienced during sexual intercourse. The most common adverse reactions observed in these trials were vaginal discharge and abnormal pap smear. For DHEA supplements, which are not reviewed by the FDA, the evidence on effectiveness is mixed and safety and efficacy data are lacking. This table lists centrally acting agents for the treatment of HSDD. These agents modulate neurotransmitters in the brain that affect sexual response in women. Bupropion is a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor approved for treatment of depression and smoking cessation. It has been shown to improve measures of sexual arousal, orgasm completion, and sexual satisfaction when assessed using the Changes in Sexual Functioning questionnaire. The most common side effects in trials treating depression included tremor, agitation, dry mouth, and constipation. Buspirone is a serotonin 1A partial agonist used to treat anxiety. When used in combination with a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, or SSRI, it was found to decrease SSRI-related sexual side effects, with 58% improved compared to 30% improved with placebo. The most common side effects in trials treating anxiety included dizziness, nervousness, nausea, and headache. Flibanserin is a serotonin 1A receptor agonist and a serotonin 2A receptor antagonist. It is FDA approved for generalized acquired HSDD in premenopausal women. 
In three clinical trials, flibanserin was shown to increase sexual desire, decrease sexually related distress, and increase satisfying sexual events. Note that efficacy takes several weeks to develop. If no effect is seen within eight weeks, it should be discontinued. Its prescribing information includes a boxed warning that highlights the increased risks of serious hypotension and syncope with concomitant use of alcohol. Hypotension and syncope can also occur if taken with moderate or strong CYP3A4 inhibitors, including clarithromycin, ketoconazole, and others, or in patients with hepatic impairment. Certification is required for prescribers. The most common side effects in clinical trials included dizziness, somnolence, nausea, and fatigue. The first step is to find a private space to talk with Sandra, such as a pharmacy privacy room. Express a desire to help and ask Sandra if she has a few minutes to talk. She says she needs to pick up her three-year-old from daycare, but could return the next day a half hour earlier. She returns the next day, and you invite her into the privacy room. You watch for signs of worsening depression, ready to refer her for immediate help if she had any signs of intent to harm herself or others. She tells you that she didn't realize this sort of consulting service was available in the pharmacy until she read the sign near the check-in counter yesterday. You start with a normalizing statement and an open-ended question. You say, many mothers of young children have sexual health concerns. What sort of sexual concern are you experiencing? You follow up with some specific questions, such as, when did you notice the problem with low desire start? And, when did you begin taking your medication for depression? You also ask her about birth control and learn that she's on a combined hormonal oral contraceptive. You consider the modifiable causes for HSDD, which include the SSRI, inadequately treated depression, postpartum status, breastfeeding, and hormonal contraception. You discuss these potential causes with Sandra. You suggest two potential changes that might help, switching to an antidepressant less likely to cause FSD, such as bupropion, and a possible switch to another type of birth control. With these suggestions in mind, you ask Sandra's permission to speak with her primary care physician, who is currently prescribing the SSRI, about these potential changes, and tell Sandra you will call her the following day. She agrees. You speak with the primary care provider, who decides to prescribe bupropion and to taper off the SSRI. You inform Sandra. Sandra comes in to pick up the new prescription that afternoon and you give her a written schedule for weaning off the SSRI. When she comes to the pharmacy a month later for her flu shot, she thanks you for your help and says, I feel more like myself again.